episode 66, 5 to 1, Overrated Movies. There's like a golden trail and a silver trail, and then there's that big robot Terminator. Oh my and, gosh, and then, I feel like you haven't seen this then, movie. <laughs> and then there's the... There's the <laughs> Hello and welcome to this week's episode of 5 to 1. 5 to 1 is all about the countdown from our panel of experts on a different topic each week. Today, we are featuring the most overrated movies in our style of counting down from 5 to 1. Before we get much further, we should probably introduce our panel of overrated movie experts. I am Chris and I am joined by my two underrated sons. Cade Moore. My 15-year-old. And I'm Jet Maximus Keith Moore. My 12-year-old, and we are... Five, five to, to one. one. So, I guess we should have just a, a, a few seconds of pleasantries here. We've been off for five months. Really? Five, five months. months? Yes, our last episode was in January. It's I not thought June. it was three months. No, five. <laughs> uh, Jet turned 12. Cade turned 15. Lots of stuff happened, and we'll just leave it at that. Sorry if we've been gone for so long. Let's get on to our list. How about that? Did you guys have any rules for your lists? No. Not really. All right. Well, as a reminder to our longtime listeners, we've changed up the format a bit. Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Um, I have a warning. A lot of the, some of my options on my list, I haven't actually seen the movies. Oh, gosh. Um, but I just think they're going to be overrated. Oh, this is how Jet has been lately. He forms opinions on things before he sees them. Uh, okay. Moving on. <sighs> That's annoying. Moving on. I should say, for my list, and, and I don't know if you guys did the same, a lot of people confuse overrated and bad. They're not the same thing. Overrated does not mean bad. Overrated is like how you think of it. like Compared, compared to, to ever, ever society. It can yeah. be bad. Compared, it can be, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It could be that... You can love a movie and it can still be overrated. Yes, I have movies on my list that I actually like. One of them I really like, and I think it's great, but I do think it's overrated. So... Uh, before I get all sorts of hate on Facebook or other social media outlets for my choices, just bear in mind that overrated and bad are not the same thing. All right. Oh, and I've seen every movie on my list. Good. I would hope that you would have an opinion on something after seeing it instead of before. <laughs> I don't know who would do that. Yeah. Uh, but we did change up our format a bit. If you're looking forward to the fun fact of the week or Jet's pun of the week, we'll get to those once we are done with our lists and our listener choices. Oh, also, by the way, these listener choices were voted on back in January, too. So, so they're a little... <laughs> All right, let's just get on to the list. We'll start with Cade. What do you have for your... Number five. I have Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the Johnny Depp one. Okay, so that's the newer version. Yeah. Okay, I haven't ever seen that one. I've only seen the original. I've seen it two or three times. In school? In school and, like, I don't know. But I've seen it two or three times. And everyone says they love it. Like, everyone I know is like, man, it's such a good movie. Johnny Depp did really good in the movie. I was like, I don't really like that movie. Like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. It, it's it, it, it's kind of weird. At best, just all right. I would I would also, I have a fond spot for the original, but I would also say it's overrated. It's weird. The, and the Oompa Loompas are annoying. Yeah. Singing's I've heard annoying. Weird, weird and dark theories about uh, Charlie and the Chapter. Chocolate Factory really hurts your head after a little while watching that movie. Visually, it really does. It's hard yeah. To watch, uh, yeah. Um, I heard theories that the chocolate and the candy is made out of his children. Oh, I never heard that. That's creepy. I know. Hmm. That's why I never watched it. Oh, interesting. All right, so Cade, you have Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the new version. The original is called Willy Wonka and the Chocolate yeah, Factory. That one's better than the newer one. Is it? Yeah. I, see, I never saw the new one. It looked. It wasn't appealing to me. I guess it's like. The, the color schemes, they make it really obvious. It's like like dark, and then once you go inside, it's like really bright and happy, but it's like super dark and gray, mm. and then it turns like really vibrant. I, I don't know. Yeah. It just doesn't look... Like stark differences between... Yeah. yeah. It's... Gotcha. All right. All right, Jet, what do you have for your number five? My number five is The Hunger Games. Okay. I respect that. I like The Hunger Games a lot. I, it's good, but it's not great, in my opinion. It's not absolutely amazing like yeah. everyone says it is like everyone freaks out about it i feel like yeah i could see that 
I didn't really consider that one, but that's that's a, a decent choice, and at least you've seen it, so I can respect that. I do like um, the actress, which, Jennifer Lawrence. I really like her, but I'm not a huge fan of the Hunger Games either. And I even read the books, and I wasn't a... I mean, I liked them fine, but I wasn't a huge fan of those. I either. read the book and the movie, and I just think it's okay. Yeah. It's I mean, I watched the book. I didn't read the movie. <laughs> Lame. <laughs> All right, so you have the Hunger Games for your number five. I guess we'll go on to mine. My number five is The Fast and the Furious. Oh, I was going to play a little song while I did it. I totally forgot and have you guys, like, figure out what the movie was. Not that it would have taken you long. So the first one or, like, the newer ones? So I I put the first one as my choice, although it's it's related to the, the newer ones, too, because the first one is just kind of this average action movie it's not great it's not horrible it's just a fun like kind of popcorn flick but there have been eight movies and there's two more planned ten movies in a franchise based off of a very kind of average action flick I don't get why everybody I don't get why these still make money is what I'm trying to say like why do people go to pay and see besides Paul Walker dying why would you go yeah because like the first one was big right and the second one decently big it wasn't huge Wait, yeah it- but it, it was and then that made the second one kind of like that one too just because it's the sequel and then they like really like declined from there I will say that the first one was the first one was big enough to warrant a sequel and maybe a third fine not good movies but to at least make some more box office money whatever but then four and five and six like I don't get how they kept making movies it just doesn't make sense to me so that's and then like seven when he died that one was like well yeah because like yeah and then eight was yeah uh, I don't know yeah, and there's two more planned, and like I don't even I don't think Vin Diesel's even in them anymore. I think he was replaced by The Rock or something. And no, he, like, no, I think he, no, he is. No, I don't think he is. I He's think in he, the last one. He doesn't. He doesn't like The Rock because he like took over his franchise. Basically, like they have beef. Why do they have beef? Both, For the reason I just said. They're both manly dudes. What's beefy about that? Because the, the Rock took over his franchise. Anyway, I have the Fast and the Furious as my number five. Wait, is it the Fast and Furious? It's the Fast and the Furious, the first one. I thought it was just the Fast Furious. No. That's really... There's Fast and the Furious, and there's Fast Five, and there's all these others, but... Oh, Too, too fast, fast, Too Furious. Yeah. Too Fast, Too Furious. The Fate yeah. of Furious? Of the Fury. There's a the in there. I never knew that. Well, now you know. The more you oh, know. Yeah, I was about to play that, Cade. <laughs> all right, moving on, Cade. What is your... Number four. Toy Story. Oh, this is a good one for you. Yeah. Because you hate Toy Story, I and everybody Toy loves Story. it. Why do you hate Toy Story so much? When I was younger, I mean, it scared me when I was younger. Because of Sid? Not because of Sid, because of Sid's toys. Sid's toys, yeah. Yeah, and it always gave me a weird vibe, and I still get a weird vibe watching it today. The the like spider-looking thing that had the baby head on it? Yeah, that was... That was creepy. But besides that, it's like... on like to- I, I looked at a lot of lists for like best movies of all time. And like that was a lot of them. Oh Toy yeah, Story. And Toy I, Story. I don't agree with that. Toy Story is a very beloved movie for yeah, sure. Yeah, I like it. I like it too. I would like place a lot more animated movies above Toy Story. Anime movies? Animated. And animated. I, I would, I would too. Actually, I, I kind of agree with you that it's a little bit overrated. It wouldn't make my list. I don't think it's as, I don't think it's Disney's or Pixar's best movie, but it is good. I mean, I would just say yeah, it's, it's alright. Yeah. But you've always you've always said that, so that's a good pick for you for sure. Because um, everybody loves those, and you've so never it'd make like them. top twenty on a lot of lists. Yeah, and I definitely don't like, agree with that. Toy Story three, I cried at that movie, the the third one. Uh, it's Toy Story. I don't think I paid attention enough to like understand most of the. I don't think I. I don't even really know what happens in that movie. I didn't really pay attention. It's really sad. Toy. It's not that sad because in Toy Story four, they shouldn't make this sequel. They're just going to be with some other kid. No one really cares about Andy. They just care it, about the toys. It'll bring in, you, you know what you sound like right now, Jet? You sound like all of the Star Wars fans that are like, why are they making new Star Wars movies? The story was done back in 1983 know, with Return the, of the Jedi. The, the, they're just ruined. It's because they're bringing in new fans. And for people that still want to continue the story, it, it's good for them. I know, but sometimes movies just don't need a sequel. They just don't. I don't disagree with you. I'm just saying you remind me of those fans right now that are like, why did he even make the prequels? He he pissed all over my childhood. And I, there are people who wanted. They made tons of money. People wanted to see him, and they well, added to the lore. I love the sequ- uh, prequels. I love the prequels. Yeah, too. but you could feel in the first three Toy Story movies they had heart. Okay, they they cared. And you when haven't seen the fourth stuff. one, so how do you know? But because because he's assuming they're selling out. Have you even seen the trailer? Just, 
Yes, I've seen all the trailers. There's that new girl named Sandy. Look, it's there, the, that's yeah, another audience it's going to appeal to. The, here's the thing. There's going to be kids that have parents that loved Toy Story, just like me with Star Wars. I loved Star Wars when I was a kid. There's Star Wars in the theaters now. I get to take my kids to see new Star Wars movies. That's a big deal for me. No, they're not as good as the original trilogy. They're not even close to as good as the original trilogy. However, it's Star Wars in theaters, and that makes me happy. I get to share that experience. We've gone to every opening night for episode seven and eight, eight and Rogue, Rogue One and, and Solo, and, and we Star will, Wars story. and we will for nine, and we're we're gonna be right up in the front, right? And that is a very cool thing. Well, for me. not right up in the front, not in the front row, <laughs> at the front of the line, at the front of the line. And there are people who love Toy Story that grew up in the ninety, in late nineties, and that was their favorite movie as a kid. And now they get to share that with their. That's a cool thing for those people. So don't hate on it just because you have prejudged it before you've even seen it. Okay, fine, I'll give it a chance. All right, so Cade, Toy Story is your number four. Yes, Jet, it is. what's your number four? My number four is Avatar. Good pick. Um. I haven't seen the full movie, but I've seen lots of parts of it. Okay, so this this doesn't count as a movie I haven't seen. I've seen less than a minute of it. Really? Okay. Yeah. So why I think it's so overrated because it's like I think it's the highest grossest movie, highest grossing movie of all time. You are correct. And I know it's new with all the three D and stuff, but it's just it's not a good movie. It's just the three D stuff that makes it so special. Yeah, so it is the highest grossing movie of all time worldwide. Domestically, it's still The Force Awakens. Uh, but worldwide, it is Avatar with almost $2.8 billion worldwide. It is about to be passed by, by, Endgame. by Endgame. I thought Infinity War had more than Endgame. No, Endgame, Endgame is still uh, quite a bit behind. I don't think it's going to pass The Force Awakens domestically. The Force Awakens will keep that record. Worldwide, Endgame is going to pass... Um, Avatar, it looks like right Didn't now. Didn't Red Dead Redemption 2 have like... I have no idea. <laughs> You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> the thing with Avatar, Jed, I agree with you. It's not... It's When I say overrated, it's kind of stretching the definition a bit because I don't hear people say, oh, I love Avatar. That's the best movie of all time. Nobody says that. Yeah. But for it to be the number one movie in the box office of all time, that's nuts to I me mean, because it's not that great of a movie. I like it, but I don't. Yeah. And so, therefore, it doesn't make it good. You see, I didn't put it on my list because I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Jet's right. It was the first movie that was designed for a 3D viewing experience. But there was already 3D out. 3D was out, but it would be like you'd have the regular movie and then they make a 3D version that was just slightly different. This movie was designed to be seen in 3D, and it was a big. they really promoted that. And 3D tickets cost more than normal tickets. So that really bumped up the overall revenue that the, that the, money, or that the movie made. So... But it's still, it's crazy that it made that much money to me. It's not that good of a movie. Sometimes 3D movies, like, I don't like it because they can be too extra. Like, if you're not watching it in 3D, there is so ma- many unnecessarily 3D shots, like the elbow oh, yeah. and just, the screen and all that. Just for, like, the effect. Yeah, yeah. And, and, like, when I'm watching them, like, it makes me uncomfortable. Like, I joined in, like, the, the little part that I saw, I walked in and there's, like, a big colorful forest and then there's, like, giant robots. And I was like, oh, The movie's not horrible. It's just not great either. And... The other thing is, when you have these movies that are gigantic box office hits, like take Star Wars or take Titanic, which was the number one movie for a long time before Avatar passed it, um, they have resonating cultural impact. Star Wars is everywhere. It's pervasive. It's in pop culture everywhere. There's merchandise everywhere. Titanic. It's like Shakespeare. Yes. Titanic is pervasive. Not as much as Star Wars. It doesn't have as big of a cultural impact, but it's still referenced all the time. I'm king of the world or whatever he says when he's at the front of the boat people know what you're talking about you know um avatar has none there's no you don't see it you don't hear of it and it's the number one box office movie of all time it's just weird it just doesn't fit so i agree with you jet yeah all right my number four i have a song for this one too cinderella no no Oh, come on, you guys. It's familiar. It's The Godfather. Oh, yeah, that's a good choice. So, and I, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this one because The Godfather, this is the one I was referring to when I described that what overrated really like means. It. I really like this movie. I think it's an all-time classic. I think it's one of the greats. I do not think it is the greatest movie ever made. And therefore, by definition, it is overrated to me. Um that's all I'll have to really say about that. I almost feel bad about putting this on my list because it is a like it is a 
very classic and an all-time great movie. It's just not the greatest. And the fact that The Godfather Part 1 and The Godfather Part 2 are considered like the two best movies of all time. I just I can't I can't buy into that. I do like them. I I, I love I would venture as far to say that I love these movies to an extent. They're just not the greatest. And so I haven't seen them due to the fact that the appeal like the kind of movie that doesn't like yeah, the whole gangster like I, mobster I feeling I don't doesn't attract me. Yeah, it's not a genre that I really uh, am attracted to either. So I can get that. All right, that's all I'm going to say about Godfather. Sorry to everybody. I actually like the movie, and I recognize its greatness. It's just overrated to me. All right, Kid, what's your... Number three. Wizard of Oz. Okay, so I heard some conversation about this before we started. Tell me why you think Wizard of Oz is overrated. Well, like, it's considered, like, a classic, like you said, The Godfather. Yes. I don't like it at all. It, it is, it's, I don't know. I know it's old. It's very old. But I still don't like it. I think I, I, know, like I, know, I want to say it came out in 1939. <laughs> like, it's yeah. very old. I know you yeah. can cut it some slack because it's so old and the costumes look like crappy Halloween costumes. Except the story just, it just makes no sense. There's like a golden trail and a silver trail. And then there's that big robot Terminator. Oh my and, gosh, and then, I feel like you haven't seen this then, movie. And then there's a, there's a, a scarecrow. Uh, and don't even get me started with the small lion. Like, what is what is he doing there? And the girl named Sally... Oh my gosh! You, <laughs> this is the this is like bad movie descriptions should be uh, like a YouTube channel or something. Like everything you said is wrong, basically. That's really funny. No, I I actually I think this movie is great. Oh, I, I, and are, the flying monkeys. There are flying monkeys. I think this movie is great. Those are creepy. I, I think um, I don't necessarily want to say that I love it. It's not one of my favorite movies, but I recognize its greatness. I do, and I I do like the story. Uh, the jet totally butchered there. Um, I don't like the singing either. Yeah, the singing in any movie gets annoying to me. But I would say for the time that this came out, I want to say it's probably so so far ahead of its time. If you compare it to any other movie that came out in that time, I I feel like you wouldn't feel this way. It has a and in fact, I had this conversation with somebody not that long ago because some people voted for Star Wars for the most overrated movie, which I can I can kind of understand because it does have the pervasiveness that I talked about a few minutes ago. However, I think because of its influence on cinema it's it I, my assertion was it's the most influential movie in cinematic history and i i still believe that i googled it to find out what other people thought and it's actually ranked number two the number one influential movie in cinema history is the wizard of oz really yeah mm-hmm. and when you look at it, at how much it's touched and been referenced to since then um there was some algorithm that some really smart people developed that determined the wizard of oz is the most influential movie in cinematic history so i get that you don't like it I disagree that it's overrated. That makes sense. Mm. Should I change my list? You shouldn't change your list. I respect it is your what you opinion, feel. but I completely disagree with you. You are entitled to your incorrect opinion. But it's correct. <laughs> All right. Jet, what's your number three? My number three is Frozen. Good pick. I like this pick. I, I have seen Frozen, okay? Actually, I've probably seen all my list entries now that I think about it. But yeah. Frozen, I get that there's scene in all that, like... I know I I already don't like scenes scenes in movies, but I really don't get why this movie is so big. Yeah, I, same. Like I love Disney movies, and I was excited for Frozen because it got so much hype. Yeah. And I don't hate it, but for me, it's kind of like middle of the road, maybe below average for for a Disney movie. And a lot for of people big Disney movie for too. any Disney movie, I would say it's middle of the road or maybe even below average for me. And some people say it's you know amazing. So I was I had very high expectations for it, and a lot of people love it. I didn't I didn't like the songs very much, and I didn't like the movie very much. If it wasn't Disney, like if this wasn't Disney, I have no idea why it's so popular. Like there's nothing that stands out about it to me. It's yeah, just I get I that. don't understand. Yeah, I agree with you. All right, my number three is Avatar, which Jet had as had as his number four, and we've already talked about. So we'll move on, Kate. What is your Number two. Elf. Good Same. pick. You had it for your number two also? Yes. Okay. I'm glad you guys put this because I, I forgot it. I should have put it on my list. But tell me why you think it's overrated. I mean, like, so many people love Elf. It's Like, the, when you talk about it, everyone loves it. And they think it's so funny. They're like, this this is the best Christmas movie of all time. I'm like, have you seen Home Alone? Yeah, man. Home Alone's way it's better. It's below average Christmas and below average comedy. And way below average Will Ferrell. 
who is normally oh, yeah. really, really funny. And he's what, so is, what is the best Will Ferrell movie? Talladega Nights, <laughs> for sure. The, the, best, <laughs> the best thing That's about... probably my favorite comedy movie, too, honestly. honestly. The best thing there. about Christmas movies that are comedy Christmas movies, they have really funny parts, like in Home Alone and stuff. But sometimes they have these really sad and deep scenes about Christmas mm-hmm. and joy. And it, it makes you kind of choked up, right? Yeah. Olf has none of that. It's just a bunch of funniness that's not even funny. I think they went for it at the end when they were trying to get people's Christmas spirit up. But it didn't really resonate yeah. with me either. A, a lot of people love, 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 love this movie. And I, I just never got it. I don't think it's that funny. And I, I It's really not that funny. It's really not that funny. Yeah. So I'm with you guys. I, I didn't put it on my list, but I'm glad both of you guys had it because I'm not a huge fan of Elf either. Every white person loves Elf. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> except for me, I guess. <laughs> and half of you guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you had number two uh, Elf also, Jet? Yes. All right. We'll move on to mine. I don't think you guys have seen this. It gets It's Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And I'll probably get some h- hate for this too. <laughs> Is that the one with the girl and the sword and the knight? There's a yeah. There's knights and swords. I don't know about the girl. It's a, it's a British comedy movie. Um, a lot of people kind of hold it as gospel for like dry British humor, and there are parts of it that are funny, but a lot of it's just really dumb to me. It does have some charm, but overall, I think it's extremely overrated. Not that funny. In my opinion, some movies can have horrible comedy, cheesy jokes, but are not loved at all. They're only loved by like. Some nerds. Have you stuff? seen the the what's it called that, Office UK? Yes, but let Jet finish. Um, yeah, like they have all all of that stuff, really cheesy jokes and all that, but they're not like number four best movie of all time, like Weird Science. Yeah, like it has some really bad jokes and stuff. But it's not overrated yeah. because it's not like people praise it you, as being. Y- you could love those movies, but like yeah. Elf, it just. Mm. Well, we moved on past Elf. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're on Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Which people hold in very high regard. I, I would venture to say it's probably on the IMDb Top 250, and I it blows my mind. Like I'm going to look it up right now. Um, I don't get it. But, Kate, what were you going to say about the Office UK version? Is it better than the U.S. A lot version? Of people, a lot of people think yeah, it is. Yeah, it's like on every list it's ranked above. I actually I like the U.S. version better, but it's because I saw it first, and I was probably attached to the characters. Have you seen the U.K. version, too? Yes, that's what we just talked about. <laughs> it, it makes it, sometimes when I watch it, it's funny, hot, sweaty, and uncomfortable, like a Nickelback concert. <laughs> if that's how it, I, I would describe it, like that. That's okay. Um, a Nickelback concert. That's interesting. So yeah, Monty Python and the Holy Grail is um, it is number one ten on the IMDb top two fifty, and I I can't like I can't fathom that like. It just doesn't make sense to That's me. It's above average. Way above average. Make the top 250 is a big deal. Yeah, but, but above average for top 250. Yes, it is <laughs> above the midpoint. I think, point, <laughs> the I, think I might know all of our number ones. I definitely think it's Dad's. I don't know about Cade's, but it's probably my number one, too. Well, wait for your turn. Or do you want to guess now? Yeah. Is your number one? Are, are wait, you, no, I don't want you to guess, because if you get it right, it's going to be stupid. Well, even if I don't get it right and I was right, then we're all just going to talk about it anyway. No, let's let's just wait. All right, Cade, Jet, you can do it when it's your turn. Cade, what's your number one? Avengers Endgame. Interesting. Okay, I th- I thought about Avengers made my honorable mention, but tell me why it's the most overrated movie to you? Because it's one of the biggest movies, and it's got like really good ratings. Like everyone loves this movie. Everyone that I talk to about this movie, they all love it, yeah. except for the one person I saw it with. Yeah, we both hate that movie. What? And there's I like you liked it. one. Or two good parts, and the rest of it is just trash. I hate every single part of it. <laughs> so you, you know, you know how I. Uh, yeah, I was about to say like I'm always dramatic when I talk about this. No, yes. that movie is garbage. A burning <laughs> pile of garbage. It's not a burning pile. I haven't seen it, so I shouldn't. It's comment, it's but... horrible. It's it's terrible. It's the worst. I'm sure it's not horrible. Everything that I didn't like want to happen happened. So, and everything that I wanted to happen didn't happen. So the outcome you didn't like. The outcome I didn't like, and it's we like, shouldn't spoil it pe- because people, people are still seeing it. No. <laughs> if you haven't seen it by now, you've been spoiled. That's that's the case for me, yes. But still, I don't want to spoil anybody that hasn't seen it. Uh, I, Avengers I Infinity War, I can get why people think it's overrated. I actually think it's kind of overrated. But I actually really like it. Like, Marvel movies, they're, they're kind of cheesy and stuff. But they actually did make a huge impact on movie society. Oh, yeah, for my sure. favorite, for sure, yeah. my favorite Marvel movie is Avengers: Age of Ultron. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, 
Mine Everyone the first loves. I've talked about loves that's this movie, and they say it's so. He said good. Age of Ultron. Isn't that the first one? No, that's the second one. The What's first one is Avengers. Oh, there's that, there's four Avengers. There's yeah. three. Well, yeah, there's four now. There's the Avengers and Avengers: Age of Ultron. That's the bad one. Infinity War and Infinity Endgame. War yeah. Endgame. Oh, I thought I thought there were only three. My yeah, favorite. People forget about Age of Ultron. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite is the first one and the 2008 version of the Hulk. I like 2003 Hulk. <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah, Both of those joking. movies aren't good. Iron Man is my favorite Marvel movie. Mine's either Iron Man or... Like Mine is Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the That's Galaxy. Or my second Avengers. Favorite. I would say Guardians is my second favorite. But some of the new movies are good. I think I put Guardians above Iron Man. Really? Mm-hmm. The original Iron Man is my favorite, easily. I think... It- I think it's really. Okay, I think or Jet, it's, you really like Ragnarok. I, lo- I love. Ragnarok. Oh, I I love. That's my my top three. It's probably Guardians of the Galaxy, Iron Man, and then Ragnarok. So I'd say Iron Man's Iron Man, Guardians, and Black Panther. I think Iron Man. I seen that yet? Iron Man is an underrated MCU MCU movie. But Iron Man Two is the underrated. way Dad describes it is an overrated MCU movie. <laughs> no, there's no way it's overrated. Marvel, no, it's underrated, I'm saying. Yeah, it's underrated because Marvel took like a, a lesser known comic book character and started this gigantic MCU universe yeah. off of it. So it's imp- and it's almost solely because of Robert Downey Jr. being the most perfectly cast actor in a role of all time. I agree. <laughs> I, I saw a post online where it was like, if Iron Man was black, who would you cast for his role? <laughs> Someone replied, Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> and it was his, his uh, character in um, the movie where he plays a black guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't remember the name of the movie right now. Will Smith would be good. <laughs> I think Robert Downey Jr. is better. Wait, what? I can't picture. Will, Will, oh, jeez. Will Smith would be good as Nick Fury. Yeah. So but not Samuel as good Jackson. as Samuel L. Jackson. But I, I, think, I, I can't think of anybody else being Tony Stark at Wait, this point. Wait, I, I like, think I can. Tom Cruise. No. Yes. That, that would be he, horrible. He'd be the best Iron Man. Oh, my gosh. We're, we're ending this conversation <laughs> Wait, There now. should be two Iron Mans. <laughs> There is. <laughs> There's War Machine. War Machine is a sidekick, not Iron Man. All right, Jet, what's your number one? Or do you, you're going to guess to see if it's mine. You're probably The Dark right. Knight. Yeah, it's mine also. Yeah. I haven't seen it. I think, it's, I think it kind of falls into the category of the Fast and Furious. Did, uh, did I say the end? No, you said it wrong. It's the Fast and the Furious, but keep going. The, fast and the furious. Fast Too Furious. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think it's in the same category? I th- like, I think it's furious. a good superhero movie. Like, but Heath Ledger, I think he's a, he fits Joker really well. And yes, I think, you think he, he got bigger because he died for sure. Yes, yes, and I think it's he's really, 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 really good as the Joker, and mm-hmm. the, I think he's the best Joker. Second best. Jack me. Nicholson's also really good. Yeah. But just because someone dies, yes, you respect their death, rip. It doesn't mean, like, it's the best movie of all time just because the yeah, actor died. Yeah, it's because, like, rappers die, and then people call them legends, but they weren't considered legends before they die. So I don't want to take away from his performance because I do think he I, did a great uh, yeah. job. But I do think that it Therefore, also got additional hype because I respect of his passion. I, I didn't get to watch to the part where he's in the movie. The one time I tried watching this, I fell asleep within the first five minutes. I can't get over... I, I really like the actor that plays Batman, Christian Bale. Yeah. I actually really like. I, I can't get over him in this movie, though, because of the way he talks when he's, I'm Batman. Like, it's ridiculous to me. Like, just... You can change your voice, but the way he does it is crazy to me. I, I don't get the super love for this movie. I'm I'm with you, Jet. I thought it was good. It was actually a really, really good Batman movie, in my opinion. The second best Batman movie behind the one in 1989 it's with Michael Keaton. It's not the fourth best movie of all time, And I don't though. even like Batman that much anyways. But I can't... You're right. I can't believe it's holding on to the number four spot on the IMDb Top 250. It's still there. What happens is movies come out. Endgame came out. It was in the top five movies of all time. Then... People see it, it starts to like settle down to where it belongs. It's now in the teens. It's same thing happened with Infinity War. It's now like number 58 or something like that. It just, they they regress the over Knight time because still people still get over the there. initial excitement. Yeah, The Dark Knight is still there. It's not better than Citizen Kane. It's not better than Schindler's List. It's not better than Star Wars. It's not better than Lord of the Rings. It's not better than Fight Club. It's not better than Citizen yeah. Kane. Or Harry Potter. That. Wait, that's a debatable. It's just all these classic movies that are behind it. And I, I, yeah, like how is it better than the Shawshank Redemption or Lord of the no, Rings? I'm just kidding. Or the Godfather is number I'm just one because they're all above. Godfather <laughs> one and two are number two and three. Yeah, I don't, I don't get the super love for this movie. I can say I could understand it if people are like, "Oh, that was a great Batman yeah. movie. That was a great I, superhero movie." I can buy that. I can't see it in, as a number also, four movie of all time. Um, I will admit, if this was like 
It is a lot better than a lot of Batman movies. I I can't admit that. Like the new Superman versus Batman. That's, oh, those are awful. Yeah, like Batman. Oh, for DC, this is amazing. B- Batman right? shoots people in the new movies, and then yeah. the director is like, or J.K. Rowling, I should say, is like, oh, okay, but well, what about uh, this? That's canon. How would how would the Justice League do against Thanos? <laughs> Horrible. I I think Superman wins. No, no, not I mean, at all. Think of the most powerful Avengers. Super- Okay, okay. Thanos would I think clap Thor's more powerful than Superman. Oh, and one more thing. Yeah. I yeah, forgot yeah. to mention. Yeah, the so first time I watched Endgame, I found a, like a major plot like hole. And my, my friend saw don't it spoil too. It. Like, it was like really obvious because they used time travel. Oh, yeah. So it's like, what well, happened? Like, well, oh, what? you know what would be cool? <laughs> what? If um, Iron Man, something bad happened and he's on the top top of a of a clock tower and like everything's going bad and his pass is getting erased and captain america america comes out of the car is like iron man i have to tell you about the future and it's really windy outside and iron man's like what and then captain america's like on the night you go back and then he's like what and then everything gets fixed okay how about this (laughs) how about this a movie nice uh, crossover there where the (laughs) avengers fight justice league and in the middle of the movie, X Men intervene, and then the Fantastic Four intervene, <laughs> <laughs> and then the Jedi. <laughs> Wait, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, the Dark Knight. The Dark Knight. Yeah, it's my number one most overrated movie. And mine. All right, so let's move on to honorable mention. Okay, did you have any honorable mentions? I had holes. Okay. Even that's not like critically acclaimed. Yeah. The people I know and grew up with love it. Yeah, so you watched it when you were like in elementary school, yeah. and every kid loved Stupid. it, and you thought it was dumb. Yeah, that's Shia LaBeouf. All right, what else? Um, High School Musical, another one like Holes. Where what? People grew up loving it. I the people people hate that movie, right? Yeah, but like all my friends. Yes, but he's saying my when age oh. group loves it, and Captain Marvel. No, Captain Marvel. I don't know if that was. Yeah, most people don't yeah. like that movie. Captain Marvel isn't like critically acclaimed. Well, it's like anything. one of the biggest movies. It made a lot of money because it's Marvel. Yeah, but it's not. Most people don't have a high opinion of it. No, a- any others? No honorable mentions for me. None for you. I had Frozen. I had Captain America. Oh, Which one? The first one. Any of them, really, but the first one especially. See, because I thought about that, but the I people like, I know hate that movie because it's a bad movie. I like Captain America Civil War because Iron Man has more screen time than Captain America. Yeah, I do like that. And he was beating him. Yeah, until, and and the yeah, the Winter Soldier. I did like that part of it. Um, I had the Avengers on there, and then Elf, of course. All right, uh, so let's move on then to the worst. Oh, I have a bumper for that. Why don't I play it? The worst. All right, J- Arcade, what's the worst for you? I had a hard time interpreting the worst, but I was looking up what people think are the most overrated That's what I did. that I think is great. I did the exact same thing. And on a s- several lists in the top 30, Gladiator was like, yes. was in there. Huh. That was so like, many times. Like, for one of the lists, it was like number three or something like that. Yeah. Where people voted, like, this movie's really overrated. Interesting. And I was like, I, I love this movie. That's a really good pick then, because I did the same thing. I thought about. What, what year did this movie come out? I want to say it's 99 or 2000. Okay, because people said, like, the lightning looks so fake. Yeah. I was like, I mean, if it came out a while ago, I mean, the effects aren't going to be as good. Better than 300 I, I, effects. Those I are think, terrible. I think the reason people might argue that it's overrated is because it won the Oscar for Best Picture that year. And it's not your typical best picture type of movie. It's usually something very artsy. And that's what I feel about Black Panther. Like it wore a bunch of these, won these a bunch of like artistic awards and stuff and yeah. Grammys. But the effects, I love Black Panther, but they were kind of garbage. They were a knockoff of the Phantom Menace, is what they were. It, the, <laughs> they looked ex- the, the, the battle <laughs> on what uh, Wakanda. It looked exactly like the battle on the boo. Yeah, yeah. It was like the shields and everything. It was just like yeah. It was, it was very exactly similar. Like it. Although I still like Black Panther. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's just I don't. It only got awards because it was a good movie, but it should have different awards, not this artsy stuff. The yeah. effects are kind of garbage. Or what did you have for the worst? Jeff? Mine is fairly obvious. Star Wars. I, I, I also picked Star Wars too, and. It's because of the stuff I talked about before when people say it's overrated. I I can understand because it's everywhere and not everybody likes it. But it is everywhere. Like you can't go to the gas station or to Walmart or anywhere and not see something Star Wars. And for people that don't like it, they're like, I don't get it. That movie is overrated. However, it is so pervasive. There are so many people that adore it. The fandom is loud about it. It's, It's so influential. I can't agree that it's overrated when it's that influential. So that's my opinion. And plus it's really good. 
And what is the biggest thing of all time? <laughs> the biggest thing? Yeah. Like, when, um, what do you mean? Like, God? movie? I don't know. <laughs> Christmas? You, like, Christmas. Star Wars was big, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, a lot of people know it. Yeah. But is it the biggest thing of all time? <laughs> like, what is the most well-known thing of all time? I would probably say God. Jesus. That makes sense. Well, no, because, like... Jesus might be a little bit more known than God. There's religions that don't believe in Jesus. But they there's usually have religions a God. that don't believe in God. Anyway. <laughs> let's go on to... Listener Choices. So this was forever ago, and I didn't even put it on all of our social media platforms, so our votes were not as numerous as they usually are. I mean, we did get 78 votes, so... Uh, there's a small sampling there, but we asked social media, what is the most overrated movie? And the results are as follows. Number five of oh, this, sh- this, this is actually a good indication of when I put this poll up. It's been a few months because the number five answer was bird box. Oh my gosh. <laughs> because bird box was a huge thing when I put this on social media. It. It's, it's not, it's not great. It's not horrible, but everybody was talking about it at the time. Why, and why, why are you, oh, yeah. <laughs> everybody really- was really into it for like a week. And that's when I put this poll I'm up. I'm surprised you got so much attention. Yeah, I really did get a lot. All right. Number three slash four was a tie between star Wars and the notebook. Oh, the notebook's a good one. Yeah. Number two was avatar, which made my list. I think, one of, one of yours list, Jet's list, I think. Yeah. My list. And number one, the, according to our listeners, the most overrated movie of all time was Titanic. Which is I kind of expect that. I haven't seen it, so can't you know, talk about Yeah, it. I mean, it was huge, huge box office movie. It was the biggest movie of all time for a long time. Um, so I can, maybe you could apply the same um, principle that I did to Avatar to Titanic, except that Avatar made even more money and it isn't as good. So, um, for the people that would have heard Titanic. Do you I like love, Titanic? Eh, it's all right. I mean, I, I when it was out in theaters, I refused to see it because everybody was seeing it. I wanted to be different because I was a dumb teenager. But then I was dating this girl named Sarah, and she really wanted to go see it, so I went and saw it with her. Turns out Sarah was crazy, and I probably shouldn't have done that. I told you the story about Sarah. Yeah. There's, 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 I, I, oh, I shouldn't have said her last name. I'm going to have to edit that out. <laughs> um, yeah, because she, yeah, she, was, she was nuts. She ran out of my car one day in the middle of the night. Uh, anyways, um, let's move on to the pew, 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 good. Pew. Glenn Solomon fun fact of the week. Pew, 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 good. Pew. All right. So I felt bad about putting the Godfather on my list. So I came up with some fun facts about the Godfather just to kind of pay it some homage because I feel a little guilt over including it. Um, a few fun facts about the Godfather. Marlon Brando won the Oscar for best actor. He's the old man. Um, Vito Corleone. Yeah. And he boycotted the ceremony. He didn't attend the ceremony because he was protesting Hollywood's racist dis- depiction of Native Americans. Honorable cause. Al Pacino played Michael Corleone, his son in the movie, and he was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. And he didn't go. He also boycotted because he thought it was disrespectful that he was supporting actor, even though he had more screen time than Marlon Brando, <laughs> who won the Oscar for Best Actor. <laughs> So I thought that was interesting. Um, additionally, uh, Robert De Niro. So in The Godfather Part Two, Robert De Niro plays a young uh, Vito Corleone. So Marlon Brando played Vito Corleone. Then Robert De Niro played a younger one in The Godfather Two in these like flashback scenes. And Robert De Niro won the Oscar for that performance. The only time in um, Academy Award history that two different actors won an Oscar for playing the same character, hmm. which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Uh, he boycott it too. No, he did not boycott it. So there's a scene that if you guys haven't seen it, you won't know what I'm talking about, but everybody that's listening will. There's a scene where there's a um, a dead horse's, it's a horse head that had been cut off, was left in somebody's bed to freak somebody out, right? Because it's a gangster movie. And it's a very famous scene. And the actor, when he was screaming in that scene, he was not acting. It were real screams because he that, was expecting a fake horse uh, uh, and it was a real horse's head that was brought in another fun for the fact. film. If that was like... That fact came out like now. Oh yeah, it would be all it would be all over the place, which my next fact relates to. But go ahead, Joe. Another fun fact: a similar <laughs> thing. An alien, nineteen seventy-seven, when the first chestburster scene, everyone started screaming and stuff. They weren't expecting. Yeah, it. yeah. they never told him that because they wanted the real reaction. Well, this was a real horse head, and there was a lot of backlash when it when it came out for animal by the animal rights activists. Uh, they protested the movie. 
And Francis Ford Coppola, who was the director, he he quoted he was quoted saying, "There are many people killed in that movie, but everyone everyone worries about the horse. It was the same on the set. When the head arrived, it upset many crew members who were animal lovers who who like little doggies. What they don't know." is that we got the head from a pet food manufacturer who slaughters 200 horses a day just to feed those little doggies. That's a good response. I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty insensitive. I get that the horse was already dead, right? Yeah. But still, that's, I don't know. I probably would have had why a problem with it too if I was on one. set. Maybe he just wanted it to be real. Maybe he wanted to get a real reaction out of the actor. I don't know. There's some, I guess, artistry behind it. However, I do think that... uh it's kind of crazy that they used a real horse head. Anyway, those are the fun facts of the week. I hope you're prepared. And he's thinking of a pun right now. It's time for Jet's Pun of the Week. I came with a backup if you didn't have one. Um, I, I, I couldn't think of a pun and I'm eating a banana and my pun slipped. Oh, gosh. And also, why do people eat bananas? Because they're appealing. Okay. Good job. Give me a clap. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Both of mine were really good. I don't know. The one I brought, just in case, was... Um, did you hear about the guy whose whole left side was cut off? No. He's all right now. <laughs> you didn't make that up, I bet. No, I didn't. <laughs> but I got to come up with a backup because you often but forget to even... Really good. Make one. All right, I don't really have much, but uh, we'll do this real quick. Feedback. The only feedback that I can remember getting is like 30 people ask where the F we are because we haven't recorded in <laughs> like five months. So that's about it. So I'm going to wrap up the show unless you guys have anything else to add. We're good. All right. Well, thanks to everybody for taking the time to listen. Please check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash five to one podcast. You can tweet us at five to one podcast. You can at us on Instagram, five to one podcast, same handle. Give us your opinions there. Let us know why you agree, why you think we're idiots. We want your opinion. It's also a great spot to leave us ideas for future episodes. Also, please take the time to give us a review on iTunes. I haven't checked those lately. I'm going to do that uh, after this episode before our next one. So if there are any new reviews there, I can give those people a shout out. We love feedback there, especially good feedback, and it helps our podcast to gain exposure. You can write us. We have an email address. It's 5 to one podcast at gmail.com. And you can call us. We love getting voicemails. It's 469-607-521. That's 469-607-5861. Hey, Jet. Why don't we tell our listeners to please, please join us next time on 5 to 1 for our discussion on... <laughs> Top 5 70 songs. Oh, gosh, you're so bad at that. Love you. <laughs>